Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my show. So my next guest name is Enoch, and he is absolutely amazing. He was formerly in foster care, and now he has a youth organization, and he's giving back to children in tremendous ways. So please welcome Mr. Enoch to my show. So welcome to my show, Mr. Enoch. I am so happy to have you. Could you go ahead and just introduce yourself and just tell us who you are and what you do in the world? Thank you very much, Jessica. I, first of all, I'm excited to be here and I love the vision that you have with helping to bridge the gap of the miscommunications about like foster families and children and caseworkers and helping them to be able to better understand each other and to raise awareness of the foster care and I love this foster care champion concept that you're sharing. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It's a privilege to be here. And I'm fully supportive of what you're doing here. So my name is Enoch Leffingwell, and I, I'm currently working with a nonprofit called the Army of Youth. And we help young people to identify their unique talents and dedicate them to the Lord's service. A little bit about me is I, I grew up I was born out of wedlock and I, I grew up without a father and quickly was into the foster care um, system when I was uh, a baby. Some of my first two years, I was in and out of foster care a- in Southern Oregon. And that is some of the experiences that I had there that have greatly shaped to what I'm doing now and, and being able to work with the young people and why I'm so passionate about helping people when they're in their youth because of so much potential. And someone was able to reach out to me who was interested also in foster care at a youth camp that was really impactful in my experience. And that's why I'm here today. And that's a little bit about what I'm doing right now. I know you said until age two. So did you end up being reunified or did you were you adopted? That's a great question. Originally, my, my mother, she had uh, me and my sister and she was struggling to raise us. And she had originally went to the state thinking that they were going to be an aid or a help or something because she saw as a parent, she was struggling and she wanted help. She was not trying to put us up for adoption or have us taken away. She was going seeking for some support that she didn't have. And when she went out to find the support, the foster or whoever she spoke to, they're like, oh no, we see these children in danger. We need to go rescue them. So what they ended up doing was they took my sister and I away from my mom. And that was not what she was trying to do. And so we went into foster care when I wasn't even one years old. My sister's three years older. And about a year into it, my sister ended up getting picked up by her father who lives um, in California. And she grew up with him until she was about five years old. I didn't see her. And I stayed there because my father wasn't really in the picture. And while we were there, that's how we, we got involved with it originally. And, and my mother, she was struggling at the beginning, but she continued to look for help. She didn't give up and she continued to try to go to parenting classes, trying to understand like what could she do to help get us back. And eventually she was able to, to be able to recover us through, it was quite an amazing experience, but to be honest, the, the foster family that we were involved in, they had, they, they had too many children to, uh, to really take care of, to take, take care of us. And I was a, a lot of children that were like my age or they were younger or under four years old. So it was just too much and, mm-hmm. and it wasn't really the best experience for me. So what advice do you have for children who are experiencing foster care? One thing I, w- I would say for the children is that a lot of times it could be easy to think that while we're here, we are separated from our, our parents, our father. I know for me, when I was younger, a father, I, I just felt very un, unloved. I questioned like, why is my father in the picture? And um, like, why aren't I, why doesn't he love me? Or am I not good enough? Or I struggled with a lot of these thoughts. And, and a lot of times I also thought that when it, because I didn't have a father, that meant 
that I wouldn't be able to be a father or a good father to, to like children in the future, or that I wouldn't know how to be a man because I didn't have someone manly to be able to help me. And sometimes there'd be people who would see me in this situation and want to take me under their wing, but then they're like, I'll be a, like a father to you, or I'll mentor you. And then they got to know who I was and they got a little closer and they realized, whoa, this is a little more intense uh, than I had anticipated. So I had mentor after mentor, like father figure after father figure, give up on me and distance himself. And so that, that led me down this dark spiral where I, I started to really distance myself from other people and to just give up on the idea that, hey, there, I don't have a father and I never will. And I, I won't really be able to understand what that connection looks like. But w one thing that I would encourage is that that's how I used to think before, but now I begin to realize that there is actually a purpose to that pain, that today I, re I look at it in a different way. I see that because I grew up without a father, that means that I will never put another child through the experience that I went through, and I will be a better father as a result of that. That means that because I went through that experience, I'm able to relate to other people and I could see when someone doesn't have a father, I, I could pick up on that and I could relate to them. I could comfort them, encourage them and realize that um, they're not alone. And where before I used to look at this as one of my greatest limitations and something to be shameful about or rejected. But now I realize that this experience is more of this is now a part of like my gifts, my contribution to others, my, my gift to the world where I can help encourage. Even just today, I was talking to a young man and he was saying like, I could totally relate to your experience because I grew up without a father. And he was saying like the struggles and a lot of the thoughts that he went through that I went through and just knowing that you're not alone. And I, I wanna encourage every youth out there to realize that everything in life is happening for you and it's not to you that there is a purpose for your pain and the things that you go through doesn't have to be your limitation, but this could actually be the stepping stone that springboards you to be able to fulfill your life calling and your purpose of why you're here. And that really, I believe that God has a plan for your life. And if you're able to follow that plan, you can be an encouragement to others. You can share your test can become your testimony. Your mess can become your message. And as you endure and you go through this, one of, one of the best advice that I got was actually from my mom because what ended up happening while she got me back when I was two, when I was about eight years old, she got involved with a high school boyfriend again. And, and he didn't, he was in the family and he didn't really care for me. He, we didn't get along mm -hmm. and he, and it, it was a lot of tension. He was always looking for things, how to get me in trouble. But when I was 10 years old, my mom ended up going to rehab and kicked him out of the house and said, hey, you're not going to, you're not good for our family. It's not good for you to be here. But while she went to rehab, I went back to foster care again. And as I was staying with this family, it was like my last two weeks, there's only two weeks left of school. I was with this, with this class for the whole year or well, my whole grade school. And now I was like being separated, uprooted, going to a whole new educational system or district where I don't know any of the young, the children my age. And now I'm only there for two weeks. So I'm never really going to connect well with them either. And it just seems so discouraging. And I remember my mom wrote me a letter while she was in rehab. And something that really stood out to me was she was telling me, Enoch, don't give up five minutes before the miracle. And that really set, impressed me because I realized that even it's in the darkest moment when everything seems like it is going wrong and there's nowhere else to turn and it seems like there is no hope. That is when victory is near and there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is a rainbow after the storm. Don't give up five minutes before the miracle. When you feel like that there's no hope, there's no reason to continue, just I would encourage everyone to continue and that there is hope for the hopeless. And that's why I'm here because I truly believe I, I was living an aimless life and an aimless life is a living death. And now that I've found hope and I've found peace and encouragement, I realized that it's like we, through that experience, it equipped me to be able to help relate to others and encourage other people who've gone through a similar experience. You're not alone and your experience is not unique to just you. 
I may be able to relate with some or most or, or different things, but you are able to relate with other people. You can reach people who no one else can, but through your experience, it helps you to be able to help encourage and strengthen others who feel like they're alone. And as you look back, hindsight's always 2020, but you can be the friend that you wish you had. You can be the older brother you wish you had. You could be what you wish you had when you were younger, when you were getting started. And in this experience, God is equipping you. He's preparing you for the future, a future of usefulness, a future of purpose and a future of meaning. And I would just encourage people, my advice is to don't give up five minutes before the miracle. That was good. So what advice do you have for people who work with children and serve children and families? That's a great question. I know that a lot of times, I think it may be difficult for people to understand what foster children are going through because that sometimes people get involved because they are, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of different reasons people get involved. Maybe they want to help people, they want to encourage them, or maybe they've gone through something, experienced something similar, and they want to give back, or they have had a family member who they love who was in that, and um, they want to participate and make a positive change in this world. And some people, I'm afraid, go in for, because of some financial opportunities. But the, the advice that I would give is, I think a lot of the young people are disconnected and they are not sure who to trust. They're not sure how to really navigate life because they don't really have their parents. And a lot of times they're just trying to figure out like a big question that I had for so long was, do you really care about me or are you just here? Or are you just doing this? And I remember there was this friend, there was a friend in high school and, um, he was more of an acquaintance and I was having a rough day and I was sitting in the library and I remember it like it was yesterday because of how he worded himself and I was having a hard time and he sat down next to me. He says, how are you doing, Enoch? And I, I paused and I was thinking, do I tell the truth or do I just say, yeah, I'm good like everyone else? And I just asked the question. I said, do you really want to know um, or are you just asking? And I'll never forget. He just stopped everything. He looked at me straight in the face and he says, Enoch, I really want to know. I'm asking because I'm your friend and I care about you. How are you doing? And I remember at that moment, it melted my heart. I've never heard anyone do that before. They were so sincere. They were so honest. And he was like, you could see the love in his heart and his, and his attention that he gave me. And at that moment, I was like, every ounce of me wanted to share with him. But I'll be honest, I didn't at the time. But even though I didn't do that, I always remember the impress that I had in my life. And because of that, I've been able to show that consistent care for other people. And I realized that when breaking through, like when we go through pain, a lot of times we put these walls in our heart to protect us from getting hurt again. And a lot of people, a lot of children, they have these walls. And if you wanna break through the walls, you have to be persistent. You have to be persistent with love, with care and consistently showing kindness that you're not just here for a paycheck. You're not just here doing your job. You're not just here because you have to, or you're just one of a bunch of people that have their own agenda. When you could really communicate that I'm here for you, I'm here because I care about you. I wanna know there's your story and I wanna know what you're going through. I think that speaks volumes to people. And a lot of times there, we will put some distance and we put these tests and we might seem like we don't want to be heard. We might seem like we don't want to tell you or we don't want to connect with you, but it's because we're hurt and we are trying to know who's safe and who's not. And if you want to really make a difference in people's lives, in the children's life, be present, be persistent, be willing to consistently show that care that you're here and eventually you'll break through the different layers, like peeling back like an onion. And when you have their trust, I would encourage you to, to, to definitely not break that. But that is one thing I would suggest is that a lot of times there, there's layers and that consistency of caring is going to help to pierce the hearts and really make a difference. And also know that like my friends in high school at Faithful Day, even though I did not share with him at that moment, 
His act of kindness will never be forgotten and has influenced me for years. So you might seem like your efforts is being fruitless or you don't see fruit on the surface, but know that if you are being consistent and caring and loving, you're making a difference and you're, leaving, you're planting seeds. You might plant a seed, someone else will water it, God brings the increase and someone else will harvest it, but know that it makes a difference. And I'm grateful for each of the person, people on the journey who were able to speak life and hope and healing into, into my life uh, on this foster care journey of mine. Wow, that was good. Thank you so much. My last question is, yes, I have two. So the first one is what is next for you in your life? Great question. So right now, what I'm super excited about is the Army of Youth. It's a nonprofit I was mentioning before. I realize that a lot of young people are aimless. They're not sure what their purpose is. They're not sure why they're here or, or what to do or what are their talents or gifts or callings. Like, why am I here? And I realized that this was something that I also wanted to further clarify for myself and understand more and more. So it, it's, I founded this ministry called the Army of Youth, and we help young people to identify the unique talents and dedicate them to Christ's service. And it has been such a life transforming experience for me and seeing all the young people that are coming together. We're working with youth from all around the world. And one thing, one project that we're working on now that's been really helpful is we're doing these small groups online that people are coming together in groups of five or 10 and young people are learning how to uh, connect with others. They're learning social skills that they've never known before. That one of the testimonies we hear the most is that people are stepping out of their comfort zone. They're gaining friends that actually care about them and they're growing and they're learning life skills that help them to know how to interact with others, to find direction, to find clarity in the confusion of life. And in these uh, small groups, they've, they've really been changing lives and people have had the opportunity to mentor other young people to be able to be that mentor they wish they had when they were younger. And it's like everything that, that has been super helpful for me, I'm so grateful to be able to be a part of this. And they're growing rapidly. There's new small groups that are opening up all over the world. And that's something that, that we're doing. And, and if people want to know more about that, they can go to thearmyofyouth.com forward slash squads, because they're squads, because we're in an army. And, and these little squads, they become more like closer than friends. They become more like family. And that's something that I'm really looking forward to. And that has been taking place in my life right now. And I'm on a mission to give hope to the hopeless and aim to the aimless, because an aimless life is a living death. Wow. This is, I, I love everything that you're doing. This is so amazing. <laughs> Last question is, how can listeners stay connected with you? That's a great question. If you would like to stay connected with me, here's my contact information. Are you able to see this? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Yeah. So you can go to the Army of Youth. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook. We have a podcast. Our Twitter's not that active, but we're on YouTube. And we post uh, live videos every day, helping young people to learn life skills, find direction, clarity, and understanding in their life. And this is something we are fully committed and dedicated to the youth and youth leaders who are seeking to make a difference and an impact in the lives of other young people. We're available all over the place on the internet. You just look up the Army of Youth and you'll be able to find us. I would love to connect with you. And if you want to know more about what I'm doing, check out some of the videos that I've done. They're available for any listeners who are here who've been touched by my testimony and I would like to connect together. Wow. Thank you so much. So that concludes all of my questions. Did you have any last words or anything additional that you want to say before we close out? Yeah, I just want to say that I, when I was 16 years old, I started to get involved in just some parties and some the wrong crowd. I started doing things that I got to the rock bottom. I got to the lowest of my low and I attended this youth camp and there was this man there who was just beaming with peace and joy and happiness. And I'm like, wow, he was a bright spot in my experience. And, and this youth camp was like a misfit. It was a youth camp for misfits and foster kids. 
and I fit both the descriptions. And as I was there, he gathered all the young people together and he would tell us stories and share with us experiences and things that he learned and illustrations from the Bible. And I just remember so vividly, he, he said to us that God has a plan for your life. And if you really follow that plan, then God could take you in places you never thought were possible. And if you have a desire to get to know him more and to follow him and to experience that plan, that the health, hope and happiness, then I encourage you to do. So. And he was saying that, that if you want to follow that plan, if you want to experience that life more abundantly, I just then that is an offer to you. And I want to encourage others who are working with youth to let them know that there's a plan, there's a purpose, there's a bigger picture. And that gave, that spoke hope to me. And I'm here because that man spoke life into me in a very, in really the darkest time of my life. And just know that it is our afflictions. It's when we could turn our losses into into, uh, victories when we learn from them. And there are lessons that we can learn in life. There's things we could be grateful for. And I'm so thankful for the challenges of my life because they made me who I am today and to be able to share today with you and others. And I'm just so thankful to be a part of this. I really appreciate what you're doing, Jessica. I love the vision of of bringing awareness among the foster community and to really be foster champions because this is really what is needed to really make an impact and a difference in the lives of others. Thank you so much. That concludes our interview. So thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.